It was a cold evening at the University of Connecticut when David Moyes posted an article to its Usenet servers. It was sent to the math and the C programming language news groups. It was about a contest, what he called the C Big Num Bake Off. The article started with the rules of the contest. Contestants were asked to send a program of a short length and the winner would be the contestant whose program returned a number larger than the other programs. It was to be run on a hypothetical computer where the integers could be arbitrarily large. They had 20 days to come up with their programs. As it turned out, not many people competed. But even then, to analyze the submissions of the few people who did compete, we go through a variety of fascinating concepts. David Moyes himself wrote up an article on the results. And that is where I started off learning about some of these concepts. So in this series of videos, Fine Design presents to you the Big Num Bake Off. I've always intended to do a series on the Big Num Bake Off. I was shocked to see that this gem has not been covered by others. I had scheduled these videos for a few months from now, but something happened that forced my hand. Some popular maths YouTubers decided to do a hashtag mega fave numbers movement and they had not consulted with me on this, even though I am a maths YouTuber, popular enough to have at least one subscriber that I don't even personally know. Unbelievable. And that's why I'm starting the series now, because part two of this series will start off with a number that isn't too large, but is surprising and gets your curiosity going. That will be my mega fave number. Now that we're done with that damning expose of the exclusivity of popular math YouTubers, Let's get to the bake-off. I'm not going to deal with actual programs. At times, I will talk of instructions. This will resemble code, because after all, code is just instructions. What the instructions mean should be clear as they come up. To start with, let's look at some possible ways to return large numbers. This instruction just tells you to return this number. Since our program has to be short, this number can't be more than around 500 digits. We can try using exponents instead and write something like this. To run this instruction, we just evaluate the innermost function and simplify the expression until we've evaluated everything. It returns the number you get if you take 9 and repeatedly exponentiate it with the base 2 7 times. Or to write it mathematically, this number. We understand the number 9. 2 to the power 9 is 512. 2 to the power 512 is around 150 digits long. Still a borderline imaginable number. It becomes really difficult when we try to imagine the number 2 to the power 2 to the power 512. So we will not attempt to imagine it. We do still care about comparing it with other numbers though. And we will see that it will be easy for us to compare the large numbers we come across even though we cannot imagine them. For instance, take these instructions. It starts with x being set to 1. Then we loop almost a billion times, each time exponentiating x and setting that as the new value of x. Then we return the final value of x. This unimaginable number is clearly far larger than the previous unimaginable number we got. Although we want to come up with large numbers, the journey we are going to embark on is not about the numbers themselves, but about the power of the instructions that lead to such large numbers. This first video is going to be dedicated to the power of repeating and a way to conquer infinity. We can get much larger numbers by repeating far more than a billion times. So here we first come up with a large number as we did earlier. Then we repeatedly exponentiate one that many times. Again, it's hard to imagine, but easy to appreciate what is happening here. We can continue this. Instead of returning y, we can use it to describe the length of a new loop. And we can do this whole process over and over around 50 times before reaching our program length limit. But these lines are very similar, and we can do this more efficiently using another loop. Here we show how to do it using a function. The function f here uses its input x 
and repeatedly exponentiates x times, returning the result. To understand what the last line returns, we first are exponentiating 1 9 times to get f of 9. We take that answer, which is unimaginable compared to a billion, and we exponentiate 1 that many times. Finally, we take that much larger answer and again exponentiate 1 that many times. As you can see, each usage of the function f is quite powerful. One of the entries, harper.c, uses a bunch of recursive function calls to ensure that the program does a lot of computation. David Moyes analyzes this program and shows that the number it returns is smaller than f of f of 9. It would be even cooler if we could repeat f many times, which we could absolutely do. The function g over here uses x and repeats f x times. There are slight improvements we can make here, like changing the starting value of y. This won't make such a big difference at the scale we are dealing with, since we really care about the power of the subsequent instructions, which will make all the difference. The point of f was to repeatedly exponentiate. The point of g was to repeatedly apply f. In exactly the same way, we can define h that repeatedly applies g and so on. We can probably go another 30 steps like this before our program becomes too long. But again, we can do this more efficiently. David Moyes includes a quote in his write-up that is quite apt. So let's take a fresh mathematical look at repetition. We start with a slowly growing base function f0. It takes the input x and returns x plus 1. We define f1 as taking an input x and then applying f0 x times on it. f2 takes input x and then applies f1 x times on it, and so on. We get a function fi for every positive integer i. We can understand f1 easily. If we take x and add 1 x times, we get 2x. Even f2 is simple. If we start with x and we apply the function 2x x times, we get x times 2 to the x. f3 would be similar to repeated exponentiation, f4 would be repeated f3, and so on. This sequence of functions is called a fast-growing hierarchy. Let's also take a look at what it's like to actually compute such a function. Take as an example f2 applied to the value 4. That's the same as applying f1 4 times on 4. The innermost f1 applies f0 4 times. Each application of f0 increases the value by 1. So the value increases till 8. And then applying f1 to it is the same as applying f0 8 times. And so the computation would continue. These are all really simple steps to do, but it looks quite messy. We can visualize this in a more concise way. We keep track of what functions we have yet to apply and how many times we have to apply them as a simple list rather than as this sprawling expression. So this here is the exact same computation as we did earlier. It's even easy to write code for the fast-growing hierarchy. Here the function f takes inputs i and x and is meant to output the function fi applied to x. It's easy to see that it does actually accomplish this. As expected, f0 of x would return x plus 1. And for any other value of i, it starts with x and loops x times, computing fi minus 1 each time. 
With this code, we can easily come up with really large numbers. But is there a function that we can easily code that grows faster than all the functions in this fast-growing hierarchy? At first sight, this seems impossible. There are infinitely many functions in our fast-growing hierarchy. If you give me any function, can't I just keep looking through the infinitely many functions that I have and eventually find one that grows faster than the function you gave me? This reasoning is good reasoning when we're dealing with numbers. For instance, there is no function g that you can give me such that g of 2 is larger than fi of 2 for all i. The proof of that goes via the same reasoning we just did. But when dealing with functions, we use a different definition of larger. A function g grows faster than a function f if at some point it becomes larger than f and stays larger. So maybe g starts off smaller than f, but for inputs larger than 100, g is larger than f. Then we say that g grows faster than f. We will now see that there is a simple function g that grows faster than all the functions in our fast-growing hierarchy till now. The idea behind this is very similar to the diagonalization argument, which has beautiful uses. I will link to some amazing application of it at the end of the video. The problem is that we have infinitely many constraints that we want to satisfy. What we have going for us is that there are infinitely many values that we are free to set. The idea is to use one value per constraint. That's not exactly what happens here, but it's close enough. For any fi in the fast-growing hierarchy, g would be larger than it for all inputs larger than i. It's also really easy to code by just adding one line to our previous code. I've called the function a here because it's very similar to the Ackermann function. The function has a more suitable name though by extending the fast-growing hierarchy to include this. It's called f omega. Omega is an ordinal number. It's clearly not the kind of number we usually think of because there is no number larger than infinitely many natural numbers. But ordinal numbers talk about orderings, and omega means that it is larger than the infinite sequence f0, f1, f2, and so on. It is also called the limit of the infinite sequence. It's a limit because you can't subtract 1 from it the way you would to go from f5 to f4. If you want to evaluate f omega, you have to undo the limit using the value that you are applying. By this, I mean that f omega of 5 is first simplified to f5 of 5, and then we can continue computing. Again, we can repeatedly apply f omega and get the f function f omega plus 1. Omega plus 1 is larger than the infinite sequence, and then one more even after that. Let's see a computation now. f omega plus 1 applied to the input 64. This would repeat f omega 64 times. f omega applied to 64 is the same as f64 applied to 64. f64 itself is very fast growing, so f64 applied to 64 will be huge. Let's call this number n1. f omega applied to n1 is the same as fn1 applied to n1 a far larger number than those that we've seen previously. Let's call this n2. Then we would apply fn2 on n2. And we do this 61 more times. This set of operations is very similar to what you would use to compute Graham's number. Graham's number would indeed be far larger than f omega plus 1 applied to 63, but is far smaller than f omega plus 1 applied to 64. We can of course continue the fast growing hierarchy. And the same way we came up with f omega can be used to come up with f omega times 2, which is larger than two copies of infinite sequences. And then we can continue the whole process again over and over. Quite a few entries in the Bake Off coded functions that had growth rates in this range.
and even this extended fast drawing hierarchy is easy to code. F applied to inputs i, j, and x is meant to output f omega times i plus j applied to x. Again, it's very easy to verify that this code does its job. Of course, it doesn't end here. We can define the limit f omega square, which grows faster than all of these, and then continue the fast growing hierarchy to get another copy of omega square, and then get more and more copies of it. And the limit of all these copies would be f omega cube. It's not hard to code f omega cube either. It's very similar to our previous code. And then there's omega to the 4 and so on that one can similarly come up with. Pete has two submissions, wherein he extends in the usual way the code for f omega cube and manages to code the functions f omega to the 11 and f omega to the 23. And then finally, we have Pete's masterpiece, wherein he coded the limit of all of these omega to the omega. He applies it on this large number n, and he does this in about half of the program length limit. It again follows a similar idea as the codes we showed, but it uses arrays so that it can have an unbounded number of the i, j, k variables. This program outstrips all the previous programs by a wide margin. And as per David Moyus, this program is the largest of the small entries coming in at third place in the Big Num Bake Off. So what are the two bigger entries? We'll get to that in time. We've seen enough for the first part. In the second video, we'll see some surprising claims and follow them through to interesting and relevant facts. If you want to think more about these ordinal numbers, it's nice to see how the fast growing hierarchy continues to f omega to the omega to the omega and larger. It will be useful as a first step to understand how to go to omega to the o plus 1 if you know how to go to omega to the o. Here o represents some ordinal number. Here's a nice video on the diagonalization argument by Weihart, definitely in the running for the best maths YouTuber out there. I've linked to David Moyes' page below. You'll find all the submissions in the results link on that page. See you in the next video. Goodbye.